old Padre from the Mez Cal Toad. Oh man, thank you for your support. Thank you for playing our stuff, man. It's make it worthwhile for us to actually go spend money and record. In other words, we're just banging our heads against the wall, really. This is Radio Blue Mountains, 89.1 FM. Now picture this. It's the Blue Mountains Folk Festival earlier this year. We're in the RSL, and the strains of the Magnificent Seven starts to come out. The next thing I saw is a ribbon dance by Mimi and Cole coming through the audience, and then it's a full-on explosion of music and entertainment. And with me today is Cole Padre from the Mezcal Tones. Welcome, Cole. Uh, g'day, Richard. Thanks for having us, mate. Oh, look, it's my pleasure. As soon as I heard Mexican hillbilly surf music, I just loved it. Oh, cool, mate. Thank you, Richard. I tell you what, you made a, you did a good description of uh, that the entrance to the uh, the final gig, the very final gig of the Blue Mountains uh, Blues and Roots Festival of 2023. Look, we, we've got our tongues planted firmly in our cheeks, but we just love the build up with the magnificent seven roaring through the PA. And, we, we usually, all of us walk through the crowd like we're superstars and, and it just sets the vibe and, and people either laugh and get along with it and get into it or, or they sit there mouth agape until we just we just blow them away with our entertainment and talent. I did a bit of investigation of the, of the band before you came through in March and I was so looking forward to your gig and you just did not disappoint me. A fabulous live gig you put on. Oh, thank you, Richard. Thanks, mate. And I tell you, it means a lot when you say that because we, we've put a lot of effort into the choreography and, and the costumes and, uh, you know, we, we try and take it another level past just being a normal band. Well, all right, let's talk about that. Putting the costumes and the hype aside, you are a well-polished, well-rehearsed band, a lot of presence on stage and a lot of flair. How, how did that? How did you develop into this Mexican twang style of music? <laughs> it, it was an interesting journey. My wife and I were sitting here, we were watching a Robert Rodriguez film. And we were just listening to the music on there. I was already a, already a fan of a band called Los Lobos. They're out of East LA, but they're Mexican guys. And uh, we were hearing all these Mexican artists on this on this film going, wow, wouldn't it be cool to, to do uh, a concept show dressing like this and doing those sorts of really offbeat sort of tracks from movies and with a surf twang mixed in with the alt country text mex thing. We started it just as a as a show for fun. Did one Tamworth tour, and everybody's going, "Oh man, you got to record, you got to do a CD, do a <laughs> CD," you know. And well, you know, they weren't buying the merchandise we took up to sell, so we we went in the recording studio and just found we we really gelled together in there, and slowly but surely that developed into that. So we got the twang, alt country, Tex Mex sort of vibe going, and the surf tunes. So it, it just snowballed from the original idea of just let's have some fun into four albums and ten years later, and we're just loving it, you know, having a ball. It is a great sound. You got. You've got the spaghetti western type of theme. You are based in the northern beaches here in Sydney. Yeah. But when as soon as I heard the music and from my generation, you got echoes of radio, Birdman, Johnny Cannis and the Hitmen. Is this where another musical inspiration was coming from? Oh, man, you're seeing straight through me, Richard. I tell you what, uh, growing up as a teen on the northern beaches, we had this eclectic mix of music that was considered cool. And it was surf tunes, so, you know, we're listening to the Atlantics and all this sort of mm. stuff and those, especially like uh, Radio Birdman. They got the power of going on with the punk mixed with these surf attitudes and vibes, and mm. they, were, they were my favourite band. Talk me through the band. So you're Cole Padre. Yeah, Don, yeah. yeah lead singer. Don Juan, Texas timekeeper with a smooth tequila feel. He's my brother-in-law. On the drums, he is a fantastic musician. He, he he loves playing drums. He does most of the harmony. He could play bass if he wanted to in the band, guitar, any percussion instrument. You throw it at him, he'll figure it out how to play it if he doesn't already know. My wife's on the rhythm guitar. She's the boss of the band, the driver of the Winnebago. And on the bass guitar, I've got an old mate of mine who I've played in bands with for 30 years. Um, that's Lukey. On the lead guitar, Shango, he is just such a lovely guitarist. My Lord. You know, he, he doesn't overplay. He just plays exactly what's required. And last but not least, the absolute star of the show, who I think is just, she's a delight to work with. And so when she stepped on stage for the first time, my Lord, I just, I was in the presence of greatness. She just carries that off so magnificently. She she dances. Her presence is is staggering on stage and, and off stage because she goes in the audience a lot. 
She's a force to be reckoned with. And and I believe she is the point of difference between us and, and any other band because we got, I believe, the best musicians you can get. And then you've got Mimi on top of it and she is just the cream on the pie. You know? well, yeah, you're talking about Mimi, the spicy seductress who shakes it like a rattlesnake. Yeah, coming back to that last gig you did at the Blue Mountains Festival, the interplay and between Mimi and Nerolita was just, it, it was electric. They were looking at each other, giving the glances, having to laugh with each other when something worked or didn't work. I like the way you say when it comes off and when it doesn't come off, because it may look like they made a mistake. That's a well-rehearsed mistake right there. <laughs> I'm only kidding. What we purposely do with our choreography is it's not like the Solid Gold Dancers or someone on the Don Lane show. It It's kind of more like the Blues Brothers. So it's, it's you know, the dance routines are supposed to be fun and, and loose, but watching those girls, it's incredible. They are so playful uh, with each other. And, and the main thing I think that comes across, Richard, and you picked it up, is they are having a good time. They're not pretending to have a good time. They are having a good time. All of us are having a good time. We like each other's company and we love the music we make. It does show. All right, well, let's have a listen to one of the, tr- the songs. And this is the title track or the opening track, not the title track, the opening track for Agave Soiree, Matahari Mimi. Now, there's a great twang of a great guitar with the Bixby or the Whammy Bar happening behind that. H- how did this song come about? Okay, now this is totally Shango. He writes our instrumental pieces and, and he's got a bit of a, a, a surf jazz background and he loves his tones. He loves his guitar tones and, and you can hear it through that. And Matahari Mimi is, the first time I heard it, I just thought that is so beautiful. And I, um, So I just love it. And and the interaction between the whole band, it's got some pretty ferocious drums on it as well. Um, and it, it really pedals, it motors. Yeah, good way to open the album too. <laughs> it is. Let's have a listen right now to Matahari Mimi. <laughs> FM and with me right now is Cole Padre from the Mezcal Tones. Nerolita, she's your actual true wife? Yeah, yeah, she's my wife. She is the brains behind the whole thing and the organisation. She works tirelessly to get everything done. She uh, conceptualised it, if that makes sense. She manages, she books the gigs. She, um, I, I just take my hat off to her. She's just a, a workhorse. I'll bring this back again to the live set. 
the song wouldn't last a day. Such a fun live song with that call and response between you and their leader, husband, wife, clean up, I do clean up, no you don't, yeah, blah, blah. That was <laughs> that was a lot of fun on stage. And you can see you could see there's there's something special happening between you and their leader when that song's happening and watching a fight between a married couple in front of us. It's interesting with that song. I I did write that with a lady called Danny Young. She and I got into that sort of thing and so when she was uh, complaining about writing her bits for the What's Wrong With The Man and I was writing my bits for What's Wrong With The Woman. She was picturing her partner and, and I was picturing my partner. <laughs> Wouldn't last a day the Ms. Caltones. Let's have a listen. Mexican hillbilly surf music. I just love the description of your band. On stage, you do mostly your own songs. You do a few covers as well. The album Agave Soiree is, is all basically written by the band themselves. How does the writing process go with a six-piece? Are, are the songs finely tuned in the studio or do you work them out on the road? Oh, well, see, it's interesting. I would love to have the bread to finely tune stuff in the recording studio. We generally will know that we're going to release an album every two years to take up to Tamworth. We'll get prepared a bit earlier. I generally, um, Shango and I are the main songwriters. I'll come up with ideas, bring them in. So there's different ways. The first couple of albums, the bass player, Lukey and I, we'd bounce a few ideas. Uh, I'd bring my ideas to Lukey. 
you'd set up the melody on the bass, we'd take it to the rest of the band. The last couple of albums, I've been sending songs to Chango, and he'll add the minutiae, and it'll bounce back and forth to a certain level, then we bring it in the studio. And um, it's really good writing in the studio because everybody is experienced, everybody knows their stuff, and the ideas come in, and that sort of grows from there. But generally, it's Chango and I getting it rolling and then uh, see what the guys come up with after that, which is which is good. When I'm singing, I like to sing my own lyric. Even if Shango comes up with something, I'll, I'll take over the lyric department because it's got to be real. It's got to be honest. And that's mm. the main thing. With, with songwriting too, and I, I'm sure you find this when you write songs, it's much harder to make something up than it is to tell about something that's happened. And so if it has happened and you feel it and it's real, it's so much easier to write. Yeah, uh, but it, it's all it's all a process and it, it comes together different ways. I'm sure when you're writing songs, some days it starts with the melody line in your head and then you figure out what that is on the guitar. And other times you pick up the guitar and you're just doofing around and you go, ooh, that's all right. I can mm. make something. Generally with me, it's uh, when I'm gardening, a melody will come into my head and I'll go, oh, I've got it. And the funny thing is, don't garden drunk, ladies and gentlemen. Do not garden drunk. Not because what you might do to your garden, but just simply you'll listen to this melody you recorded yesterday and go, what the hell was that? <laughs> That's happened to me a bit. Let's have a quick talk about the song Lonesome, Ornery and Mean. Now, this is a great live song. Your version has such impact. And it was, to me, it was instantly recalled the next day when I played the CD. Oh, wow. Good. That's awesome. Because if you listen to the original or mm. Waylon Jennings' version of it, but you listen to Waylon's version and it's a lovely song and great lyrics, fantastic lyrics. Chango came up with that. Yep. And it was just, oh, man. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Okay, let's build it around that. And, geez, it's got some weight, that song, doesn't it? You know, it, 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 it really, it's one of my favorite favourites to perform because that riff is really, look, it's not an easy riff, but I most definitely couldn't play it.
The Mezcal Tones playing live in The Rocks. Yeah, the Orient Hotel. And can I tell you, that is such a fun gig because I remember when I was a, a teenager in my early 20s, you'd go to The Rocks to find some fun. You'd go yeah. there, just poke your head in a band, generally be an Irish band or something like that, and you go, oh, this is something different. I'll sit here and I'll have a couple of beers. They might have a break. You wander up the next pub. So we go in there, <laughs> we're playing this uh, uh, Mexican hillbilly surf music, uh, weird brand of stuff, and people just, the passing traffic, and we have skeletons on stage as well, Fernando and uh, and. Uh, and we have them in the windows so people walk past the orient they go what the heck is going on in here mm-hmm. they poke their head in and i love it i, I look at them and their, their jaw drops and go what is this and they stay and yep. the last couple of orient gigs have been turning people away at the door it's been packed That's absolutely great. off the shelf and we're right on the carpet and when we've, we've been playing there a year, maybe uh, 18 months, something like that, little break for, for COVID. But, you know, it was a good-sized gig, gig and a, a good crowd and that. And we're playing there once a month. The last three months, it's been unhinged. It's been off the rail. And we're right there on the, on the carpet. There's drum riser and the people are right there in your face. I've got to tell you, if the train station's up the road. If you, if you want, you get down to that one. And you will see us in a sweat and right there. It is something to be seen. It is really something to be seen. Well, yeah, <laughs> fabulous. You, well, we can always look on the website for any gigs that are coming up. And on the website, you've got four CDs which are for sale. Tell us about the website. The hyphen Mezcal Tones? Yes. Got a few gigs, though, to tell you about. There's one I'm really excited about. We're, uh, we're playing at Dad and Dave's Brewery. I'll just say that again. Dad and Dave's Brewery in Brookvale uh, on June the 25th. We're launching a beer. Our sponsor, the Manly Longboard Company, have their own beer. And we're there playing, and we're figuring out a special surf tune. It's a surprise, but if you if you come, you can see it. So... We're launching a beer. Now, that's pretty exciting. Marigold Bolo on July 2 is always exciting. The Union Hotel in August 6 is in Newtown. That's really good. I'm, I'm mentioning ones near uh, near train stations, so anybody in the mountains can make mm-hmm. can get their way down there. And we're always at the Orient or the Marrickville. One thing we're doing, it's really exciting, Richard. We're playing a gig at in the Duke Hotel in Enmore in, oh, I think it's October, but we're supporting a Japanese touring band. And I cannot wait. These guys... They're called the Baytones, and they do some really interesting swampy sort of sort of stuff. But what we've done is we've actually translated the Motorcycle Girl already. We've translated to Spanish, um, <laughs> Hungarian. Yeah, no, no, I'll show you. They haven't released it yet. Spanish, Hungarian, Lebanese, German, all roots of people in the band from where we've been. And we wanted to do Japanese just simply because I wanted to a Japan. And so we've we've just got this gig with this Japanese band and went, right, we're getting it in Japanese, and that will be released in Japan in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, really excited about that. That's uh, Mescal Tones. Motorcycle girl, blow ball. <laughs> Motorcycle girl, heading straight through your world. Motorcycle eyes, seeing straight through the lies. Motorcycle girl, said she's coming.
It's been a fabulous pleasure talking to you for Radio Blue Mountains, and I do encourage everyone to jump on the, the Mezcal Tones website.com or just Google Mezcal Tones, you'll find them. Grab some CDs, grab some merch, a few bandanas. Uh, thank you very much, Richard. Thank you for having us. And as far as the Blue Mountains goes, big shout out to Goatman Jerry, who he put the entire band up in his house. And that's how we were able to afford to do the Blue Mountains Festival. He went and stayed somewhere else and we took over his house. So thank you, Jerry. And thanks to all the volunteers up at the Blue Mountain Festival there. You guys do a fantastic job. Thank you very much. Thanks, Richard.